from the soul with it. Before I even start this video, I just want to say no, straight up, no. I think the Lakers should stay far away from Carmelo Anthony as possible, like stay far away. I felt like this is a desperation move on the part of the Lakers if they were to acquire Carmelo Anthony. They failed to land Paul George, they may not get Kawhi Leonard, they may not get KD, they may not get Klay Thompson or any top free agent. No trading for Damian Lillard, I didn't think they should trade for Bradley Beal either anyway, so we pretty much may not get nobody. So basically, we should just go to the bottom of the bottom to get what's left of a 34 year old Carmelo Anthony who has struggled adjusting to the new NBA. Now, I've always felt like Russell Westbrook and John Wall were many versions of LeBron James. You know, that love to drive the ball and if the lane get clogged up, they like to kick the ball to spot up shooters and they catch and shoot. And Melo didn't work out with Russell Westbrook and OKC, but we believe Carmelo Anthony is going to work out. He's going to come to the Lakers and work with LeBron James and they're going to win championships and make runs and stuff. Like, you know, I see ESPN protects Carmelo Carmelo Anthony. I'm not really sure what their relations is. They protect LeBron James as well. I'm not, you know, sure to why that is, but, you know, at some point somebody got to be a real friend and just go to somebody and be like, bruh, it's over. It's over, man. Like, it's done. I think Carmelo Anthony should focus on business, spending time with his family, or maybe go play in the big three with Ice Cube. And to be quite honest, I feel like Soulja Boy on the Breakfast Club. Melo? The Lakers trying to get mellow? So yesterday I was reading the comments. I was reading the comments on Laker Nation. Like, I've been doing that for years now. And, and I read this fellow Laker fan. He brought up a great point that I figured I should share with everybody. He says, so everybody bashes Brandon Ingram for being the ISO player who averages five assists per game. And we would give a totally washed up mellow some minutes at the three. The dude has shot poorly lately and was always a liability on a defensive end. He can't play at a fast pace neither. All in all, who will we cut for an old guy that does not fit in and i felt like that was just a great assessment i mean other than all the other comments on there saying that they would rather have jello over mellow <laughs> and there's a whole lot of people up there like don't do it mellow numbers have been on the decline since leaving the new york knicks if you bring in mellow lebron is going to want to play with him so lebron is going to want him to have minutes so you take minutes away from your young guys and like kevin McHale stated yesterday or the day before yesterday it was one of those days he was like asked the question like would that be good for the lakers young core would it be great for that locker room. Kevin Love numbers were phenomenal before he teamed up with LeBron James. And Kevin Love was much younger than Carmelo Anthony. I think it'd be just like that Cavs situation. And I always use the analogy of like that new car smell and people being prisoners of the moment. Similar to when the Lakers acquired Tyson Chandler. If the possibility, let's say if they signed him, it'd be the excitement of him playing for the first couple of games. You know, for that first game, LeBron James would get him involved in everything and get him good looks and he'd make some shots every now and then. But then after a while, the car starts stinking again. It was like Jay-Z said, you know, it's like putting air freshener on a trash can. And it's like there'll be this excitement of a possibility of what you think could be great. But then when that reality sets in, it's like nothing's going to change. I think if the Lakers were to sign Carmelo Anthony the first couple of games, like I said, there'll be excitement from the media, the Carmelo fan base, and the casual basketball fans who probably only watch games on TNT. I think after five games, you had LeBron feeding Melo just to make sure he gets comfortable and make sure he makes sure just to make sure he's happy but then eventually i think it would go bad like in cleveland when they had the first Cavs. i'm talking about the team with d wade derrick rose kevin love etc i think Melo, of course is a liability on defense the lebron james system which is no different from the russell westbrook system Melo in spots where he will miss shots with how the media protects Melo and lebron neither of them will get the blame and they'll solely blame everybody else on the lakers roster carmelo anthony didn't work out with two of the top players in the nba who are both in their primes who just came off regular season MVPs and Russell Westbrook and James Harden. Melo didn't work out with them, but we believe that he gonna work out with a 34 year old LeBron James and a bunch of young guys. What happens once LeBron goes into his zone, gets his shots, and the offense has no flow, no motion, and the offense becomes stagnant. Then your shooters don't have a rhythm and they start breaking shots. Then LeBron James is frustrated all over again. If the Lakers got Melo now, say they got him before the deadline. So after the all-star break is when teams start to really put emphasis on defense and raise the level of intensity. I think Melo with struggle defending players who are much faster and athletic. Honestly, I'd rather keep Ingram and give him more minutes than to sign Carmelo. Now let's just focus on Carmelo Anthony numbers. Carmelo Anthony and OKC, 2017-2018 season. 
Melo shot 35% from the three-point line. Then in Houston, he dropped to 32%. Then he was 76% from the free throw line. LeBron James is 68% from the free throw line. And the Lakers are at the bottom of the league in free throw shooting. He doesn't make our defense any better. Like, what is the reason you're going to get Carmelo Anthony? What happens when LeBron comes off the floor and Ingram and LeBron don't fit together? So let's say you play Ingram with Carmelo. Ingram already said he's not coming off the bench. Ingram has to have the ball in his hands. So that leaves Melo just standing out on the perimeter. And I'm going to just end it by saying this. I think the Lakers getting Melo is a nightmare waiting to happen. He had his chance to join the Lakers back in 2014. The time is over. If the Lakers can't get the two top players I originally named, which is Kawhi Leonard or Anthony Davis, then I think they should just keep focus on developing the young guys. If LeBron James makes the players around him better like they say he does, then why are you focused on getting Carmelo Anthony? That shouldn't be your focus. Your focus should be developing Ingram and trying to turn him into the Scottie Pippen that they said he was going to turn into in the beginning of the year. Why, why LeBron James never turned nobody in Cleveland in the first run Cleveland back in 05 and 06, 07, 08, 09, 2010? Why he wasn't turning nobody into Scottie Pippen then, since he make the players around him better, since we always want to compare him to Michael Jordan. It's funny because I see people saying, Melo should go to the Warriors so he could get a ring, and go to this place so he can get a ring. Like, bro, y'all got to chill, bro. One minute y'all bash KD and Cousins, call them snakes for ring chasing and taking the easy route. But then the next minute you want Melo to get an easy chip. Like, which one is it? Melo had a chance to join the Heat and be a part of that little banana boat or that wave. He missed the train. That's his fault. LeBron wants to play with his friends. He could play with his friends at the blacktop. Like, no, bro. The man washed up. That's your real friend. Go to him and tell him, bro. Like, I, it's it. Period. Like, that's it. Melo's washed up.